the title of our lesson was uh, Lunar Phases. Uh, Brian, you got the objective. The objective was simply I can explain the phases of the moon. And uh, to start out the 5D, the original engagement, we were going to use Google Moon. Uh, we were going to actually be able to show them uh, where the Apollo uh, lunar landing modules are, uh, where the landing sites are. And there's actually uh, interactive videos on Google Moon where they can watch a, a short clip of it. The day before the lesson, we went in and got with E-Town's uh, tech person. Uh, she came in and put Google Moon on the computer for us, but they've got their technology locked down pretty tight. No outside laptops can access the internet. Um, so by the time the teacher rebooted her computer, it dumped Google Earth, uh, Google Moon, and so we had to on the fly readjust and we ended up using a video the from the Rochester Museum, Museum and Science Center. Yeah, it was a, a real short video that showed different phases of the moon and, and explained uh, <coughs> concepts that uh, don't cause the, the phases to change and actually showed them what the phases were changed by. The, uh, the explore portion of our 5E was when the students actually did the lab. We had set it up so that we divided the students into the into their groups, and each group member, based on how old they were, were assigned three moon phases. And in the lab, we actually had eight different stations with each moon phase, but if the student was only assigned, say, moon phases two, four, and six, they only went to those stations, so that later we could come back and they could compare answers. Um, and as far as the lab goes, there wasn't much instruction um, after we explained what the students would be doing. After they identified that the lamp represented the sun and that the styrofoam ball represented the moon, um, they went over to the lab and completed their lab work. Um, and then we came back for the explanation. Uh, the explanation phase was to uh, come back and make their predictions and then get to get back together in their groups. Once they were in their groups, they checked their predictions to see if they were right uh, or see how they compared with the rest of their group. And they took them together, uh, brought them all into one final, uh, one final uh, lunar phase, uh, lunar cycle phase paper that we'd given, and to make sure they all went together and that everybody was on the same page, and that the cycles that they had uh, or the phases they had were correct. And for the elaboration, we took other models and talked about the different eclipses, solar and lunar, and talked about the differences between those two and how they occur and we used a different sized balls to represent the earth and the moon and talk about the actual scale distance about how they're really not that close. The moon and the earth are a lot closer than that they are to the sun and about how uh, they need to understand those differences. And uh, there's actually a, is it a solar or lunar eclipse? Solar. 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 Total solar eclipse that's going to happen in 2017, and we explained that and how in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, in August of 2017, it will be the darkest spot, and they kind of found that interesting that it would be in Kentucky. For the uh, last five e evaluations, we did a pre and post assessment, uh, which was the same exact assessment. It was two questions. Uh, the first question was, what or what changes the shape of the moon um, and then the second question was on a clear night how many of the phases can you see more than half of the moon and then the students were to go check you know of the eight phases which ones they were to do that um, the pre-assessment I could I don't know how you guys felt but I could see a lot of kids really start to get nervous and so I, you know, I just encourage them try your best don't cheat, just, you know, just if you don't know, guess. And then, you know, during the post assessment, it seemed like everybody just flew right through and was able to answer everything. So, uh, you know, as far as the assessments go, I, I feel like they didn't know anything at the beginning and they, and they took a lot away from it at the end. I think that uh, the data will show that um, as far as within the two questions, um, the pre-assessment data will show that uh, they all had some understanding of it because they all wrote something down. Mm -hmm. And probably, if I get the exact number, but near half of them answered the first question correctly. Uh, whereas, 
they struggle a little bit on the second question, grasping that um, everything. Um, I think I think they had a lot, I think a lot of them answered question one about fifty percent what you said, but I think a lot of them had some misconceptions thrown in there, like that the Earth caused the shadow on the moon, um, that you know clouds are for whatever reason. I even had some that said you know asteroids change the shape of the moon, it's it. So I mean maybe we could have worded the question a little bit differently. Yep. Um, you know, they pre assessed when we gave them five minutes, and um, out of the 26 kids uh, in my period, 24 were done within three minutes. Uh, the other two finished up pretty quick after that. When we gave the post assessment, we gave five minutes again, and within probably two minutes, yeah. everybody was done and was sent in ways. We actually got to kind of move through that a little quicker and, and move on to the elaboration a little more than what we had planned uh, because they did get to pick up on it real well. I would say the one drawback that I had to clap in the class. It took them quite a while to get through the uh, pre-assessment. Uh, the post-assessment, they got through it, but it seemed it seemed like I still had several that were just a little past five minutes uh, when I finally just pushed for them to call time on the test. But uh, when I looked through the, the results, I mean, they, they were on the right track. I guess maybe it just took them a little longer to actually uh, compose their thoughts and, and translate it onto the paper which is something I guess we need to uh, maybe try to plan for if you, if you are in a collaborative environment. But I think the numbers will show, though, that you know beforehand you were around 50% or so could, could answer both questions correctly, and when we got done, the numbers were a lot higher. I think they were in the 80 percentile. Actually, yeah, I graded my assessments, and actually I had 28 students in my class. I think eight of them were GT, <coughs> Two of them were IEP, and of the 28, when I graded my post assessment, 24 stayed the same or showed improvement. So I was pretty, pretty excited about that. Um, it shows that maybe you know maybe they needed more elaboration on move phases and stuff, uh, which is hard to do in a 15 minute period to cover everything. But I think that they definitely took something away. Well, and going back to the 15 minute period, I think that's also why we're limited to only half of our, our lab being student directed to, I mean, 50 minutes, it's hard to uh, let students just go at it and yeah. explore, you know, for 50 minutes straight and without being guided in, in order to, you know, meet your objective by the end of that time yeah. period. Ideally, it could have been two days. I think when we yeah. initially planned it, we wanted them to go through all the phases and then we had to, mm -hmm. we had to go through and chop it down. And, select three phases for each student. Which yeah. actually, I, I, I really think actually turned out better because then that did give us the opportunity to do the collaborative thing yeah. and have them teach each other. And that was really great. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what you want. You, you know, you want students to teach each other to be able to do that. That's true. It did lead to some huge conversations in my class. <laughs> yeah, we got in a few arguments too. They, uh, they struggled with fun. yours. I noticed uh, when we had the iPad app up and we were in the new mood and you were right about 50% both ways in that collaborative class. Oh, yeah, whether they had me confused. Or whether it was full. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know, you know, they were, and they were adamant. It, it, even if they were wrong, they were adamant they were wrong. <laughs> but they were, you know, they were after it. So. Uh, in regards to the uh, original cookbook lab, the lab consisted of the students seated at their desk watching a PowerPoint presentation of different moon phases along with different pictures in the book. Uh, we decided to take that and change it to where the students were going to have interaction, uh, be up moving around, and actually seeing the different phases using uh, lamps and uh, styrofoam balls. Yeah, the original version was more or less a one-day lecture going in where the students took notes and just looked at the pictures out of the book. Uh, then it opened up into some sort of uh, Cookbook lab with Oreo cookies. Um, with the Oreo cookies lab, we found that you could take the icing on the center of the Oreos and shape out what the phases of the moon looked like using the icing. And we just thought for high school that was a little bit too easy, so we wanted to change it up and make it a little bit more difficult. So then we had to use bigger props and lights. That way they could actually be more hands on instead of just eating snacks like kids or something. So, what did we change or how did we rearrange? When we were working on the original cookbook lesson, we thought we'd make it more research-based, put in some research.
research-based strategies. Um, so we use kinesthetic models and uh, students made hypotheses. Graphic and, organizers, yeah, graphic predictions. Organizers. Also the group dynamic, we use a collaborative group work. Uh, it's going to work well with uh, this type of work. Yeah, that way the students can compare their answers with the government. I think the hardest part about converting into the cookbook lab was us, I mean, coming in and, and running the experiment ourselves and working with the types of different lamps, the size of the bulbs, the size of the lamps, working with shading in the classrooms, how we're going to actually take that over from this classroom over to the lab and, and set it up there. Um, so, I mean, that was what I thought was the yeah, hardest part. Yeah, to make sure the, 